Hello online crew. We're going to talk about something a little bit different today. We're going to talk about hashtags. Do you use them? Do you love them? Do you not use them? Do you not really know what their purpose is? That's what we're going to talk about today. And the reason that I raise this is because depending what platform you are on, you will have different thoughts about hashtags and that's cool. Some of them you some of you may use them a lot. Some of as uh, some of you may not use them at all. But what I just want to try to get across on this video is the difference between the platforms so that you don't destroy any. Hello Crystal, hey Mel. Um oh, I've got comments awesome you don't sort of destroy your posts because of your usage of hash hashtags okay hey Michael how are you going um, so it's just a little interesting topic because what I see is that hey Olive those um, really heavily um, people that heavily use Instagram you guys that love Instagram hey Lynn and then you decide to play on Facebook, but you sort of started on Instagram. You use strategies that work over there that don't necessarily work over here and you get limited reach because of it. So um, it's just something that I've seen that I thought we'd have a little chat about it. Hello, Judy and Bob. And um, just make you aware sort of across the platforms what is um, basically the recommended practice for the different platforms regarding hashtags. So just something out of interest. You might learn something that you didn't know before um, and you may change what you're doing um, you know, because of it. So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, so that for those of you that are joining me live, please say hello and put the palm tree down below. Hello, Bonnie. Uh, the palm tree is a mascot here for our online crew. And if we've not met before, if this is the first time you've seen me live, we are um, a group of awesome, um, you know, we're an online crew community. That's what we call ourselves here. And we're home-based business owners, entrepreneurs, network marketers. Those are in MLM, you know, small business of your own. Um, well, to some degree, a home business that you want to learn how to leverage social media to build your business the modern way. So we want to, um, you know, really learn how to attract people to us by the things that we post and do on social media and um, maximize our opportunities for people to reach out to us because we don't want to chase anybody to buy anything off us. We don't want to hassle anything, anyone to go into business uh, with us. We uh, truly want to attract people to us online through attraction marketing strategies. Hey, Courtney, good to see you on. Uh, so there's lots of things that we can do around that. There is a lot to know and social media changes constantly. Hey, Monica, and what worked only a few months ago may not necessarily be what works today. What platform you're on, social media platform, is going to have different strategies um, and not all strategies are going to be equal on each platform. So if you're playing around on more than one platform, you do need to be aware of these things. Hey, Julie. And there are some things that can help or hinder our social media efforts and hashtags are one of those. So I just thought we'd have a quick chat about hashtags on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and what you shouldn't shouldn't be doing roughly it is interesting with hashtags because I've heard um, different people say different things about the number of hashtags particularly on Instagram but I'll just um, you know let you know what I've found out and what I've experienced and you know what I hear around the traps you know about them so just you know one of these things that we want to know if it's going to hurt us or help us it's just something that we want to have a, you know, have a little chat about because when we do post on social media, we want to make sure that we maximize our efforts and not hinder them. Okay. So if you're not really aware, like the hashtag is sort of like the old, the, the pound symbol and it actually originated from like a, a telephone company, like you see it on your, on your phones, the, the hashtag. So that's sort of where it originates from. It's called, it was called at, I think it was an Octothorpe or something. That's what it was called before. It only really became known as a hashtag when we sort of put it all over um, social media. So the beautiful thing about a hashtag is that you can identify um, certain keywords that is related to your content. 
so it's huge on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, you gotta be using hashtags. Everybody sort of knows that. And it helps categorize, if you like, your content. And people can go and search those particular keywords that you've put in a hashtag and go and find a whole lot of information around that one particular topic that's all linked to that one hashtag. So it serves a, you know, a great purpose. The only real downfall I see of hashtags is the overuse or underuse on the on the different platforms and those that are heavy Instagram users that come over to Facebook and not are familiar with Facebook. What you don't want to do with Facebook is a lot of hashtags and I've seen a lot of people do it but Facebook doesn't like hashtags. Facebook owns Instagram and loves hashtags over there and that's where a lot of information can be searched via hashtags, but when you put them all over Facebook, if you put more than about two, it's going to limit your organic reach. For, so for those of you that are mainly on uh, Facebook, but you're starting to play around with hashtags, you've heard of hashtags, maybe you've never used them and that's fine. They do, they can maximize your exposure with a particular keyword and your information can be found by all sorts of different people and different audiences that are not connected to you on Facebook by using a hashtag. So it's got great exposure opportunities, okay? But I've also seen people on Facebook that have mainly come from Instagram moving on Facebook rather than the other way around and they're putting like five, 10 or 15 hashtags. Interestingly enough, there's actually someone very, very high up that is, um, I won't mention names, a major player in um, sort of the network marketing industry um, who's on both, but all their posts are full of like 10 to 20 hashtags on Facebook. And what that person doesn't realize, although they're looked up to by many, many hundreds of thousands of people on in the network marketing industry is that that's actually limiting that person's organic reach. Facebook just downright does not like hashtags in posts. So the, and the reason for that is very congruent with other reasons that I've told you regarding external links. They don't like things that are going to take people off to another area, going exploring you know, somewhere else. They wanna keep people on Facebook. So limit your, the amount of number that you've got on Facebook to just two, if you feel the need um, you know, to sort of use them. This will be um, more relevant to the younger generation. The older generation are not really um, all embracing of hashtags. Some are, but some of you will be like, well, I've never really thought about hashtags. I don't really use them. And that's okay if you're on Facebook and that's your main platform, don't worry about them. You can put a couple there if you know what their purpose is and you know what they, um, you know, the benefit of them is and to have your information searched externally by people that are looking. But if it's not really something that's ever been important to you before on Facebook, it's not something I would necessarily recommend that you put on there, although there's nothing bad um, about it because it enables your content to be searched elsewhere other than Facebook if you are picked up on a key keyword. Um, am I making sense guys? It may not be something that you've thought much about, but on Instagram, I've heard um, different gurus suggest a different maximum number. So you can have like up to 30, I think it is, and some gurus, so don't use the maximum. Only use, you know, about 10 or 12. I've heard others say, Do, use as many as you can. You, you use the maximum number. So different people are advising different things. But the, those of you that are playing around with that over there and using hashtags, the one thing that I would highly recommend that you look into is that those key words are actually, uh, you know, you've thought about them. You're just not throwing them out there. And for those, even if you just whack a couple on Facebook, that they're not ones that have got millions and millions of millions and millions of people following the hashtag, because you're not, then people are not going to find your information. So you want to use hashtags that are keywords to what you're doing, what you're promoting, what you're about, but they're a little bit niched down a little bit. They're not the ones that everyone uses where your information is just gonna get lost. So, you know, things like hashtag winning or hashtag social media 
or hashtag loving life, um, hashtag um, 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 the, live the life of your dreams. So, you know, I've used those in the past, but they're not the best ones to actually get your information found because they're just way too big. So if you are using them anywhere, sort of some, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and I'll give you recommend specific recommendations in a moment, then just make sure you're researching a little bit as to what are effective niched down um, keywords that are going to be effective for you. If they're really, 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 really popular and they've got a, you know huge numbers behind them, then your information is just going to be lost and it doesn't really you know do much for you with your information being found because it's just one little tiny piece of information. I guess everybody that's putting out there, you know, live the life of you know your dreams, those those kind of things. But I don't know if any of you are playing around in Twitter. But Twitter was the one that first embraced hashtags. And it is well known that um, tweets with hashtags attached to them actually get far more exposure than ones without and engagement. So Twitter, yes, use them. That's where it first sort of came onto social media is using hashtags um, on Twitter. Um, so they are, it's sort of proven on Twitter that um, you do get more engagement and exposure when you've got sort of hashtags on them. Instagram, you want to use them, you want to use lots of them, but work, you know, work out what works for you. Some people say use the maximum and you'll see, you know, almost like a paragraph of hashtags. Some people will do about half that, but just research, research gurus that are in your industry that, you know, may be using hashtags and use the same ones. Like just get a little bit smarter rather than really broad, massive terms and words that doesn't really serve the purpose of what you're trying you know to achieve hashtags can be really fun you know I should have a hashtag on the video challenges so everyone's information can be all found in um, you know the one place we tried on one video challenge and some people did it and some people didn't and then some people started and then they got lost and you know so um, but that would be a good way to embrace it is something like, you know, our video challenges and then all, all the stuff can be found in the one spot that uses that particular hashtag. So you can have fun with them, with those kind of sort of projects as well. Hi, Joey, good to see you on. So I'm just gonna check my notes here regarding, because uh, I wrote down some stats. Um, Twitter ads also said that ads will do better um, if there's, on oh, no hashtags. So tweets with hashtags get specifically more engagement, but ads don't. So, um, you know, interesting um, there. Facebook get less engagement the more that you use. So I'm not saying don't use them. If you love hashtags in your social media, go for it. But on Facebook, keep it down to like a couple um, of them because it, um, it is proven to get less engagement and less reach from or from Facebook's um, perspective. And those of you that, if you are using hashtags on Facebook, you wanna make sure that your public, your um, profile, if you're using them on your personal profile, um, is actually public. Because the purpose of hashtags is that people can externally from anywhere sort of find you, that your content is popping up under those key sort of words. So if you're using hashtags on a personal profile, and you've got all these hashtags, but you've got friends only, what's the point? So when you're using social media strategies that can help enhance your visibility and being found externally, you wanna make sure that your profile is set to, um, set to public. Monica, I just took the hashtag out of an ad. Yeah, you don't want hashtags in face, like I just mentioned Twitter ads, but you don't want hashtags in Facebook ads either. So on a post here or there, you know, a couple of them to, you know, if it increases your exposure and someone finds your post by searching that, um, those keywords, awesome. But we definitely don't want them in our, in our ads. It just doesn't serve a purpose for a Facebook ad necessarily. Okay, so that's good, Monica. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, da -da -da -da. So um, I've never used hashtag, and there will be a lot of you that listening 
that won't and have never used them. And it really is embraced by the younger generation. There's no question about that. So I'm not saying it's necessarily something that you need to go and, um, hey, Julie, go and research and like, oh, I'm missing out because I'm not using hashtags. If you're on Instagram, I'd say, yes, brush up on what um, hashtags are all about, how you get um, you know effective ones, niching down to your market rather than having really broad ones. You can get analytics on hashtags. You can get all sorts of information on particular hashtags. Like if you're playing around on Instagram, it's an absolute must. Facebook, not so much. So if you've never there, Facebook is your primary source of social media. Don't worry about it. If you get intrigued, you want to throw in a couple that represent what you're doing to maybe, you know, have your information shown up under that hashtag. Like it's just something to be aware of. More so whether you're using them or not, what I want you to be aware of if you decide to use them and you're not because somebody said to you, why aren't you using hashtags on social media? Hashtags are the bomb. On Instagram, they are. <laughs> on Twitter, they are. Not as much as Instagram, but on Facebook, they are not. So I just want to make that clear. So if somebody says to you one day, oh, you're missing out on all this exposure if you're not using keywords on hashtags in your Facebook posts, it's not the case on Facebook because it, Facebook doesn't like them and it limits the, that organic reach. So we just don't want to do things that are going to limit our organic reach or our engagement. Same thing as stories. So Instagram stories, Put hashtags on them. Go for it if you're using Instagram stories. Don't do it on Facebook stories. Um, or maybe one, like it's not going to be, you know, the be all and end all on a Facebook story, but it's just not, you know, we don't want a big block of text with, you know, 10 hashtags on it appearing in your Facebook stories. So those of you that are doing both and sharing from Instagram to Facebook, you know, that's something to be aware of, um, you know, as well. So, um, you know, it really is a matter of if you're using them, being smarter about using them and just being really aware on depending on which platform um, you're using as to whether it's um, sort of going to be effective or not. And how many you use over on Instagram, I, I can't really say definitively because I've read different things from different gurus about how many you should use. So I've heard, as I said before, some people said use the maximum number and I've heard somebody else saying you should only use, well, there was actually somebody just recently and I follow a lot of his content and he said only use nine on Instagram. So I'm not going to say one way or the other because I'm not educated enough to know for myself, but I'm just sharing with you sort of the information I've found out. Definitely though, those of you on Facebook, if you're not using them, don't worry about it. If you start to use them, don't you use any more than a couple, okay? Hi, Edith, how are you going? So um, I just wanted to share that with you because I've seen a number of people that's up their game on um, social media and they might start doing more Facebook Lives than they ever have before and they make a commitment, yep, I'm gonna up my game. And then there's certain things that you might do unknowingly to then, you know, reduce your exposure or engagement or organic reach or, you know, has some kind of effect on the algorithm. I and mean, we, we never know what exactly that is, but we just don't wanna do things that are going to limit your engagement or limit your reach. And, you know, definitely hashtags on Facebook is one of those. So yeah, use them, but certainly don't go, um, you know, overboard because it's the, it works the same way as external links in Facebook. When you've got a clickable external link in the description of your post or your uh, Facebook Live, unless you've got a guaranteed audience, you're very, very popular, you've got a huge following, uh, you know every time you go live, you're gonna get um, you know, 100 or a couple of hundred people there and it doesn't really affect you, then you know there are some people that can get away with it. If you are building on social media, if you're trying to get more fans and followers, then we just wanna be aware I mean, it's really your brand or what you're saying, what you're doing and the value that you're giving trumps all. None of these little things like, you know, hashtags or, um, you know, little quirks on social media is going to make you famous or massively build your business online. It's all about what you stand for on social media. What's your brand? What value are you giving to people? How often are you showing up? You know, all those kind of things that I actually spoke about 
was it yesterday or the day before? the five things that you should concentrate if you really wanna be successful with recruiting on social media. They're the things you wanna focus on. These little things like hashtags and tips and what time of the day should I post and um, you know how long should my Facebook Live be and all those kind of things. There are little tips and tricks and guidelines and suggestions along the way, but really none of that means anything if you're not establishing a really solid brand, building your, your fans, your followers, your network, um, you know, knowing what you're standing for, who's your target market, what's your message to market, what value you're bringing to those people on an ongoing basis. So these things are good and I'll mention them just to make you aware because we don't wanna do things that limit your organic reach for sure, particularly on Facebook, but we don't wanna get hung up on these kind of things because that's not the be all and end all. The be all and end all is building your network. It's being very clear about who you are, what you stand for, what message you're bringing to people, the, you know, everything I talked about on, was that yesterday or the day before? I, can't, I actually can't remember. <laughs> but there was a video, it might've been yesterday, where I talked about the five you know, most important things to be aware of if you wanna successfully recruit on social media. There's, uh, social media is very busy, is it not guys? It can get very overwhelming when you take in all the information from all the different sources and everything you're learning, whether that's free strategies or paid strategies, Facebook advertising, you know, that's a whole nother world. If you have a website or you're capturing email addresses, that's a whole nother skill there again. There is a lot for us to learn and be confused about. <laughs> it's just the world that we are in, in social media. So on one hand, and we wanna say like, keep up with it and make sure you're not hurting yourself, but always go back to the foundations of building your audience, having a really strong brand and leading with value, okay? So I don't know whether that was, um, yes, Bonnie, it does get really overwhelming. And um, there is just so much information. And when we deal with social media, it's not just one platform either. Like some of you might be only Facebook. I'm mainly Facebook. Um, and I openly admit that. Um, but there are some people on all the platforms. So they might be on Facebook, they might be on Insta, they might be on WhatsApp, they might be on LinkedIn. They, you know, they're just on everything, Twitter. And I'll always come back to the same kind of advice on that one, which was advice that was given to me, and I've heard it multiple times. Unless you've got a strong following on one platform, then it's probably not advisable to do a lot of little things on a lot of little platforms and having just a lot of little of nothing. <laughs> I did not explain that very well, but it's always been advised to me to stick to one platform, be really good at it, be really consistent, um, do what you can to build your following, whether that's through a business page, through paid advertising, whether that's your personal profile, building your network, building your friends base, building relationships, you know, whatever it is. Get really good at one and then, or two, if you can handle it and you've got the time and then expand out to others because you've got people that will follow you. Um, you know, from one platform to, to another. So we don't want to be all things to all people because we'll end up, you know that saying that if you do, um, you know, a, a, uh, what's, what's the saying, guys? Help me out here. A, if we're doing a lot of little things, um, you know, we're, we're really unfocused, aren't we? And we can have a little bit of traction here and a little bit of traction here and a little bit of traction here, but your mind is going in 15 different directions. Um, and people are coming at you from different directions. So as we want to b get from here to here, we want to stay focused. So um, although we're all going to be, we're always going to have an element of overwhelm in social media because everything changes so fast. So you've got to have your eyes and your ears open, but we've got to have a concentrated, focused effort on what's going to move the needle forward. What's going to move my business forward? What do I need to concentrate on the most to get more eyeballs on my content? Or do I need to bring more valuable information so people will stay around and hang around um, with me? That's it, Olive. Um, you know, a jack of all trades and master of none. 
that was uh, that was sort of what I was looking for is you know we're, we're doing all these different things but we're a master of none you really want to become a master at one build up your profile and get the authority that you're looking for when you build authority and you build your presence on social media and people know you give good value then you can play around in other platforms and carry it with you so it can you know if you move onto another platform it's like hey guys i'm going over here now you got a whole lot of people to go with you um so we don't want to be too confused in all different areas of social media do something really well stay focused at it and then move on if you've got the capacity and the time in your life to learn multiple platforms and do them all really well well that's different but most people don't have time to um, you know learn something here while you know you're playing around here and you're playing around here so focused effort is what is going to move the needle forward you may want to um, get here and you're here but what we need to do is map out all the little things we need to do and stay focused with that so it's like well, grow my audience I've got to grow my audience how do I grow my audience um, okay, I've got to do more Facebook lives. I've got to reach out to more people because I'm not doing Facebook advertising. I have to do some more networking in groups or asking, you know, people to become Facebook friends, whatever it is for you, whatever I you know, it's like what I said the other day, if you don't have the money then to build your network by Facebook ads and collect email addresses and all that kind of stuff, then you need to be networking. If you're not doing either of those things, then just take a little bit of a reality check as how is your business gonna grow? How is it going to grow if you're not growing your network or you're doing Facebook advertising to grow your network? So those kind of laser focused areas that um, the five that I mentioned the other day is really what you wanna concentrate on. I just wanted to share with you a little bit of information about something different today regarding hashtags because I've seen a few people that come into the video challenges as well and they put you know a multitude of hashtags because they're new to Facebook Live. And they might be big Instagram users, and but they want to do Facebook Lives, and then they use a whole lot of hashtags, which would be limiting their organic reach. So, just a message of you, uh, you know, for those of you that are unaware, a little bit about hashtags and how to use them. So, I hope that's something that you didn't know um, before you got on this video, and now it's something that you do know that you just got a little bit of awareness about uh, how to use it on social media. Okay, so just yeah, something a little bit different. So um, thank you for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to be with you and I look forward to seeing you same time, same place tomorrow. Bye.